Here's my advice to Hillary Clinton. Call a friend here in Massachusetts, and we know you have many dating back to your days at Wellesley, and ask them to buy you a Mega Millions ticket. Tonight's jackpot is the biggest in years, and you should be feeling very lucky. Very lucky. It was just Saturday the presumptive Democratic nominee for president spent three and a half hours answering questions at FBI headquarters about her use of a private email server during her time as Secretary of State. More than 100 of those emails were found to contain classified information, and Clinton had previously been cited by an internal investigation for going outside acceptable protocol for handling such sensitive government information. For months, she's been haunted on the campaign trail with a threat of more serious charges. Gas was thrown on the fire when it was revealed Bill Clinton had a private meeting with Attorney General Loretta Lynch last week on a tarmac. She said nothing related to this investigation came up and then promised she would follow the recommendation of the FBI. And then this morning, FBI Director James Comey made this surprise announcement. We cannot find a case that would support bringing criminal charges on these facts. All the cases prosecuted involved some combination of clearly intentional and willful mishandling of classified information or vast quantities of information exposed in such a way as to support an inference of intentional misconduct or indications of disloyalty to the United States or efforts to obstruct justice. We do not see those things here. For Clinton, the timing couldn't be better. A new tracking poll by NBC found her lead over Donald Trump shrinking to just five points, 48 to 43. And today she's campaigning in North Carolina. It's a battleground state with a popular president sitting by her side. But even if she avoided charges, Comey was clear that the way she managed her email was extremely careless. None of these emails should have been on any kind of unclassified system. But their presence is especially concerning because all of these emails were housed on unclassified personal servers, not even supported by full-time security staff, like those found at agencies and departments of the United States government, or even with a commercial email service like Gmail. And Donald Trump did what Donald Trump does and took to t Twitter, charging that the system is rigged, adding the decision was unfair and showed bad judgment. So we went to Belmont today to see what voters think of today's decision not to recommend criminal charges. It's kind of upsetting. Any regular person would have <laughs> been on the way to, to jail. She was careless doing that, but I don't think uh, it was uh, she, it was you know worthy to be charged. I, I think a reprimand would have been enough. If they're completely impartial and they've made this decision, I support it. I question if they're completely impartial. So what does this mean as presidential race is about to hit reset with the conventions just a few weeks away? Can Clinton breathe a sigh of relief? Joining me are former Attorney General, Clinton supporter, and of counsel at Foley Hoag, Martha Coakley. Good to see you. Thank you. Uh, Kirsten Hughes, the chairperson of the state Republican Party. Good to see you, Kirsten. And Boston Globe political columnist, Scott Lee. Hi, Scott. Good to see you, too. Martha, let me start with you. Why was she not indicted? Well, the statute says... It clearly covers intentional conduct. It also it covers gross misconduct. She was, quote, extremely careless. What's the difference? Because, and remember that this director, FBI director, was an assist, was a U.S. attorney himself in the Eastern District of New York. Mm -hmm. He was in Central Justice. He's a Republican, appointed by a Republican. And he made a decision based on the facts that looking at other cases, and he pointed out, if you look at what happened with David Petraeus, for instance, there was no intent on her part to transfer information to anybody. Call it extremely Petraeus careless. Petraeus was sentenced to two years probation and a $100,000 yes, fine. Yes, because he purposely gave classified information to another person, mm -hmm. and he was originally supposed to be charged with a felony, only a misdemeanor. But that's where this line for prosecutors is important, that regardless of how careless it was, of reckless, unwise, you can call it whatever you want, it wasn't, in his estimation, I don't think you can say that the FBI director was politically motivated. I'm not saying it was, but gross recklessness and extreme carelessness are different things? Uh, they, they are when it comes to that statute and whether you indict or not. Kirsten, are you amongst the Republicans, including the nominee of your party, who says the whole thing is rigged? Is that your take on this? Well, 
Well, I think that the damage is is done to Hillary Clinton, whether she was indicted or not, right? This goes directly against what she's using uh, to tout the fact that she should be president. The What's fact that? that? She, well, that she has so much experience, that she's got such a great staff, that she has the knowledge, the know-how, the absolute, you know, uh, right to do what she, you know, thinks is in the best interest of the country. But do you at least acknowledge that it was a fair investigation and you, uh, you are willing to say James Comey did the right thing based on the facts as he saw them? Well, look, I think that he made a decision. I respectfully disagree with the decision, but I, I think the, the facts that have come out of this investigation are very troubling. The fact that she misled the FBI regarding uh, the emails, the fact that she uh, is really, you know, if, if even if it's just disregard and carelessness. But you don't think the investigation was cooked, do you? Uh, I think maybe the result might be uh, cooked a bit. Is there damage here? You've written about this thing. I know you have. And you said long ago there'd be no criminal charges. They're not criminal charges, but there's a, the, the, it was called, I believe, in the New York Times, not editorial, but a story, a, a, an extraordinary public tongue lashing, which w is what it was from James Gomez. I've got to say, I thought that was kind of overdone, honestly. Jim, I have never believed that this election is going to be a referendum on Hillary Clinton's email practices. I didn't believe it last year. I wrote wrote that then that if you look at the prosecutorial pattern, they were not going to bring charges. They haven't brought charges. If, if you are someone who says, okay, Hillary was careless with her emails, extremely careless with her emails, that's a disqualifying factor for me. I suppose it might affect a vote, but that's not the way people vote. But doesn't had she been indicted, had she been yeah. indicted, then you probably would have had something. People would have said, oh, she really did something. That disqualifies her for me. But it will come November, people aren't going to say, who's been more careful about their emails, they're going to vote for the person But I don't that think they, anybody thinks about the emails. The issue is, does it feed this notion that she can't be trusted? And by the way, in that area, Donald Trump is more trustworthy yeah. with the average American voter already than she is. Doesn't feed Clintons that narrative? I think the Clintons are trimmers and she's a little bit high-handed, but I, I don't think in terms of trust that that, that, that endures the way that, that... I mean, look at Donald Trump. He lies every time he opens his mouth. I mean, he should have a much larger issue with trust than she should, and I believe over time in this campaign he will. Martha Coakley, you're a Clinton support. Does it do her damage? I mean, the one thing that Kirsten said that is totally true, what Hillary Clinton is represented about these emails, I'm not suggesting there were many <laughs> true things, it's true. She said there was no classified material at the time. Comey said this morning 110 of the emails were classified at the time. She did misrepresent those facts. That's pretty and serious. And so she no? was mistaken and she admits you know, she's not as good at Twitter as, as Donald Trump is. She acknowledges, you know, the technical piece of this is not her strength. It's not an excuse. And obviously, uh, I hope we get a good head of cybersecurity when and if she's elected president. But that's not the issue. The issue is, you know, she did this. She acknowledged it. She cooperated with the investigation. They did what they needed to do in terms of the investigation. And it's going to disappear. It's They're going to elect, I agree with Scott, that they will elect her or they will elect Donald Trump, depending on a lot of other issues, but not this one. You think it has staying power? I don't think the emails necessarily have staying power, but I think this just adds to another laundry list of reasons to distrust Hillary Clinton. And I think you saw that in some of the people that you talked to in Belmont. There wasn't an overwhelming supportive nature in those comments. Well, it was not her. scientific. It wasn't exactly like no, we surveyed 100 people. No, but I'm saying average people. person on the street. Stop that's laughing, what you Scott, thanks. I mean, that's what you did, right? I mean, those things add up. So what, what did you want to say? I mean, you remember we had the so-called IRS scandal that was going to bring down, went all the way to the White House, was going to bring down the Obama administration, mm -hmm. according to a lot of the, the really rabid Republicans. What happened to that? Nothing. You mean about audits, about yes. conservative-leaning no, nonprofits? Remember Benghazi. Benghazi, this was going to be the smoking gun for Hillary Clinton. This was going to ruin her. They, they spent seven million bucks in two years, and they came up with an 800-page report that has almost nothing new. Yeah, but Scott, it does well, that no damage. thinking no, any no, argument against no, her, then based but, on history, saying, shouldn't right, work, right? What I'm saying is there's this, there's this rolling scrum of so-called scandals that really aren't scandals, and they go poof. And after a while, you have to get a little skeptical and say, I'm not sure this is maybe as big a deal as it's portrayed. And, and I think if one had had that opinion at the start of this, he would have been right. You know, uh, uh, John King was on our show today from CNN. No one plays it more down the middle than he does. Here's what he said, which I think counters what the two of you are saying. He said, and I'm par I can see the ad already. She has poor judgment, even if it's not criminal judgment, and he, who's going to be living in the White House with her, has poor judgment too, referencing this 
this meeting on the tarmac where the attorney, where he just happens onto the plane of the attorney general, and you're smiling at me in a weird way. More, I mean, that was bad judgment on his part and on Loretta. I agree with that. And I agree with that. You do agree. And they've, do already, you? they've already acknowledged that. They said it was bad judgment, bad optics, but we know that it can have affected this decision today. It just well, can't. based on the representation that Comey made that he didn't consult with her. Uh, and, and it happened just the other day, and they interviewed her Saturday, which they'd planned to do, and they obviously were going to wind up this investigation, and and f and not indict her. You know, Kirsten, even though you're, I wouldn't say you're gleeful, you're, you're something, uh, he <laughs> makes a very good point. I mean, th these fact-checking kinds of things, let's assume she misrepresented, it's the worst case scenario, she misrepresented intentionally uh, the notion that there were any classified emails coming in or going out. Uh, Politica factor, the fact-checking thing, says 60% of what comes out of Donald Trump's mouth is not true, 60%. In her case, it's only 13%. So she's not she running against FDR. She's running against Donald Trump, which sort of minimizes the problem here, doesn't it? Well, these are you the nominees. you support them, by the way? Well, I'm supporting the, the Republican. Nominee the nominee the party. Nominee, okay, yes. Whatever. And I don't look, endorse I, him, but whatever. This is whatever. What we got this year. So, listen, <laughs> I, I think that, though, saying that Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton have bad judgment are being nice to them. Look, this is hubris. They think they're above everything. They think that they don't have to adhere to the laws that abide, that apply to everyone else. There's and a little I think piece that of there that, is don't you think? I that. think there's some trimming and some high-handedness, and with Bill, a little idea, the idea that he's a sort of a statesman royalty. I do think he's something of a problem for her, but I don't think, people need to distinguish, I he think. He should be on a no-fly between... list. I think that would be good. <laughs> no, for... he's got a no list. List. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I think there has to be, people have to make a difference between things that are something of an issue and things that are a huge disqualification qualifying issue, and this is not a huge disqualifying issue, nor is her sometimes bad judgment a huge disqualifying issue. You know, Martha, as someone who's run for higher office, one of the things we talked a lot about today on the radio, and I'm a huge believer in the power of the apology, that a heartfelt apology, unless you've done the most horrific thing, the American people are a pretty forgiving lot. Here's the only thing, she didn't speak about it in North Carolina, nor did President Obama. Her staff puts out a, a statement today. We are pleased that the career official handling this case has determined no further action by the department is appropriate. We are glad that this matter is now resolved. Is that, would you have said that in similar uh, circumstances? You know, she's spoken about the mistakes that were made. She said she's made a mistake. She's That's made she mistakes says that today through too. this. You know, they want to move on, right? It's over. The decision has been made. They're going to move on. It's up to the public. This is all political. This goes back to Thomas Jefferson and John Adams, you know, who can throw the most mud in that. We're in that high season of mud throwing. So you literally think it's a one-cycle news story? I think it's a very small factor I, going forward. I, gotta say, I think she will be asked about it on television, and I expect she will, she will do, she should do more of a sincere apology and not one of those... I'm sorry if anyone was offended yeah. by my... She should come out and say, look, I'm sorry and I've learned from this and she should be sincere about it. And I hope she will be. But I don't think today is the, is the end of it as a storyline because she obviously... Is going, it's going to be pursued by different... And different you can interviews. end this discussion. That, that statement is exactly from the Clinton playbook. Stonewall, Stonewall, Stonewall. Over 200 days, she didn't answer a question, didn't give a news conference. That is the strategy, just to hang back, not answer any questions, and hope for the best. Do you endorse Trump? I can't remember. What did you say? I'm supporting the Republican That's nominee, all. I just want to get and that I, I'm... <laughs> Whatever. Martha yeah, Copeland, nice to see you. Kirsten, it's nice great to see you, you too, Scott. Thanks for having me, James. Well.